Hello, everybody. Hi. Um, welcome and thank you so much for coming to our third edition of Out of the Box. Uh, my name is Davina and I work at Maybeck, so I'm going to be your MC for this evening. Maybeck's developed the Out of the Box concept about a year ago, and the idea was to create a platform for students, parents, and teachers to engage with the idea that there are many more career opportunities beyond being a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer, which, as you know, tends to be the Malaysian way, right? We have very specific pathways that we think we need to pursue. To be honest, there's nothing wrong with wanting to pursue these pathways as long as it's something that you're truly interested in or truly passionate about. So we have here with us today three very accomplished speakers, um, two of whom I've known for a very long time. I'll let you decide which of the two, but I can definitely attest to their awesomeness. Uh, one I met very recently, but she has also very quickly convinced me that she is very awesome too. So all three of our speakers, as you probably know from reading their bios, have pursued a degree in engineering. But as you will note from their bios as well, they've all gone down very different paths. The one thing you'll find that they have in common, well, aside from having an engineering degree, is that they've all chosen to pursue their passion. So the format for this evening will be, we'll hear from our three speakers. Each of them will speak for somewhere between seven to 10 minutes. We'll have them go one after the other, after which we'll have a short break so that if anyone needs to use the restroom, they can. There's plenty of food over there, so you can have some more food during the break if you haven't had a chance to eat. And then we'll come back for a Q&A session. So if you have any questions, please come prepared to ask them during the Q&A. So without further ado, I invite our, our first speaker for today, Nanda. Thank you. Very good evening. Uh, I'm Nanda, and I work as a vehicle dynamics engineer. Up until quite recently, uh, most of my family and friends didn't know what that meant. <laughs> my two kids would tell people that my dad's a mechanic. <laughs> so sometime last year, I sat them both down to explain what I did for a living. And uh, I showed them pictures of me <clears throat> in cars, in camouflage, and uh, working in proving grounds. At the end of it all, uh, my youngest goes, I know dad you drive secret cars. <laughs> so I found that really funny because it's always been a challenge explaining what I do. And, uh, you know, my six-year-old summed it up in one line. <laughs> so, yeah, I drive secret cars, which are actually uh, prototype vehicles. Uh, I drive and develop these vehicles during the R&D phase before they go into production and are sold to the public. As a job, it's quite unique, I think. Um, <clears throat> it requires a combination of uh, driving skill and engineering skill. And uh, that's quite a rare skill, but like all skills, can be developed through the right career path, progression. Unfortunately for me, that wasn't a luxury that I had. I had to figure out what I wanted to do and how I was going to do it. See, I've always been into cars. My dad was an enthusiast. He raced at an amateur level. Um, <clears throat> we had a lot of books on cars, magazines growing up uh, that I studied very diligently, more than my actual school books. <laughs> and I grew up in, in an estate in Kadah, so we had a lot of open space and uh, gravel roads. I learned to drive when I was nine years old. By the time I was 12, I was practicing car control. Um, I finished school. When I finished school, my dad wanted me to be a doctor, and I didn't want to disappoint him. So I spent two years in India, at the end of which I told my parents, this isn't for me. <laughs> so I came back to Malaysia, uh, enrolled in a mechanical engineering diploma course, and <clears throat> also at the same time started doing amateur motorsport events to get my driving skills up. After my diploma, uh, I chose to go to Coventry University, mainly because they had the subjects that I wanted to study. Uh, but also the heritage. Uh, 
around this time, I started sharing uh, my plan, my, you know, what I wanted to do in life, all of that with some people, and got some very interesting uh, feedback. When I told my college head of department what I wanted to do, she said, I hope you're not living in fantasy land. <laughs> uh, I told my family, they said, you sure you want to limit your field, your, you know, the scope of your work at this point in time? Uh, you might want to look at oil and gas, that's more lucrative. <laughs> some of, some, someone said, why do you want to spend so much money going abroad? You know, uh, my father had died. And uh, so why do you want to spend so much money? It's, you know, you might as well join the plantations. We've got the connections. Uh, you know, you go far. But my family eventually said, uh, it's my call. So off I went. Uh, two years later, I was back in Malaysia with a degree from Coventry, looking for a job. So <clears throat> I'd applied to Proton, Perudua, Lotus Engineering, uh, some of the companies that did automotive R&D here in Malaysia. Proton and Perudua rejected my application. Lotus KIV did. So I couldn't get a job. And what I did was I got a job uh, with the guy who built race cars as a mechanic. So I was helping him build some race cars. And at the same time, I got into rallying uh, as a co-driver because I couldn't afford uh, to be a driver. And in time, I shared a car with someone and got into driving as well. But all this time, I was thinking about Lotus Ride and Handling. How do I get in? Because that's what it was called at the time, Ride and Handling. Um, <clears throat> so I looked up who the technical director was one day, found his details, put on my best clothes, walked into Proton R&D, spoke to the guards, told them I'm going to meet this guy. They let me in. <laughs> I, walked, <laughs> I walked straight to his office and met him. His first question was, how did you get past security? <laughs> Anyway, that must have impressed him because he gave me a job. And uh, in time, I got into ride and handling. I was trained. I got to work on a few cars. And four years later, four years in Lotus, <clears throat> I, I guess you could say I'd made enemies in high places. Uh, so what actually happened was I, I decided to leave Lotus, uh, despite the best efforts of some people in Lotus uh, to get me to stay. But I left because I was told that I didn't have what it takes uh, to be a ride and handling engineer. <clears throat> so I left Lotus. But around this time, my driving career was starting to pick up. I was offered a drive for a works rally team. Um, I started doing driving gigs. I, I was doing stunt driving for films, for commercials. I was a driving, uh, driver training stints for Porsche, Lotus, demonstration drives. So it was a good 10 years, I think, uh, where I was paid to drive. I won some championships. And so I think I've had a reasonably successful driving career as well. Uh, but that's not what I got from driving, especially driving in competition. I, I learned to dig deep, to always do my best, and to persevere against all odds. And these are three elements that I sort of integrated into my real core, you know? And to this day, I think they're very much a part of me. Uh, so in any way, anyway, after working for a few companies, I eventually started my own business, selling vehicle dynamics services. Ironically, the guys who were responsible for me leaving Lotus became my corporate clients. <laughs> <laughs> so in any case, six or seven years ago, I moved into the Chinese automotive industry, first as a contractor, then as a, as a consultant. One job led to the other, but to another. And in time, I was offered a, a position by Geely uh, to work on the Lincoln Co cars in Sweden. So that was a good two years. It was a fantastic team, probably my best uh, work experience to date. Uh, last year, the, the Lincoln Co 03 broke <laughs> the Nürburgring record for production in saloon cars. So it's unofficially the best handling. Uh, production saloon car in the world. And it fills me with some pride to have been a part of that. But the traveling was too much. The time away from my family was too much. So around three years ago, this British company called ProDrive uh, got in touch with me. I negotiated a contract with them where I mean, we'll stay in Malaysia, work from home, and travel when required. Uh, and that's been good. Uh, it's been three years. Every job that I've done for them has been successful. 
You see, throughout my career, uh, I've been able to exceed project targets. I've been able to deliver vehicles that are better than the benchmarks. And this is no mean feat, but and I'm not, it's not a boast, I'm not bragging, you know, uh, but it's actually very humbling. And uh, that's because I suppose, you know, it might look like I've had it together that, you know, I've always been dead sure or not, but truth is the journey has been filled with failure, disappointment, you know, lots of criticism, uh, lack of empathy. <laughs> and, and all that eventually, you know, it builds up to lots of self-doubt. Self -doubt. You know, but push comes to shove, you've got responsibilities, you've got a job to do, you've got, uh, you know, decisions to make. And that's when the, uh, you've got to rely on yourself. And that's when the, uh, the uh, you know, digging deep, doing your best, no matter what, perseverance against all odds. And that's when it comes true. And that's what I find humbling because there are lots of times where I felt lost, overwhelmed. But this core part of me, you know, kept me going. And here I am. Yeah. So... That's what I value, the self-awareness that comes with the journey. Uh, I value that. You know, the trappings are incidental, but the who I have become, the who I am, that's what I value the most. Thank you.